Ta-da!
crystal raindrops fall on the window down the hall and it becomes the morning dew and darling when the morning comes and i see the morning sun i want to be the one with you just the two of us we can make it if we try just the two of us Two of us building big castles way on high. Just the two of us, you and I.
invite you all to take a seat. Professor Teal. Some, Some of you know me as Captain Teal. Some of you, or at least one of you, knows me as Sam Andre. I am proud to be the faculty marshal, proud to lead the commencement of this procession and the graduation and carry the next symbol of the authority vested in the maritime and the academic faculty at me. As I look out this morning, there are three groups, three distinct groups. There's the graduates, there's the families, and of course there's all the employees that you see here, on the starboard side, and all around the room are the employees. The first group is of course the graduates. On behalf of all the employees, I want to tell you that as, a, as employees, we have been united and focused on one thing, and that is you, that is the students. That has been our focus for four years. We work in the classrooms and the waterfront, the labs and residential life, facilities and athletics, dining services, campus safety, NROTC, administration, health services, admissions and development, academic support, alumni affairs, career services, and many more. Students, graduates, we have all taken note. We have taken note of you, what you have accomplished. You are significant. You are respected and you are valued. We, as is the employees, we are impressed. The next, next group of people are the ones who are seated behind you. Your, your parents, parents, your grandparents, grandparents brothers and sisters, and spouses, aunts and uncles, children, family and friends. You know they are so enormously proud of you and so excited to be here today. All of you back there and all the family and friends and all of that group, thank you for making the trip to Castine today. So graduates, it's all about you. It's all about the people that got you here, and then the people, and in some instances, the people that kept you here. So now, keeping all of that in mind, it is my official duty, my charge, to offer you a time to take a deep breath, to think, and to remember. Remember the ones who helped you along the way, helped you stay the course, keep the track. I want you to reflect and consider those people, your family, your friends, and your classmates, who shared your happiness when things were good, and also stood by you when things were maybe a little bit more difficult. I also invite you to remember that the people in your lives are no longer with us. I am sure that they would be delighted in seeing and understanding and knowing what you've accomplished here today. Remember their presence is in your heart. Keep them close and cherish that memory. Now join me in a moment of silence and reflection, please. Thank you very much. I'll close by saying, this won't be the first time you hear this today. Well done, Maris. May you succeed greatly and find the best in all life that puts before you. Congratulations. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 
the Maine Maritime Academy for this, our 79th commencement ceremony. I hope you can also join us at the ROTC commissioning ceremony at 2.30 at Fort Madison. Before we begin the formal part of this commencement ceremony, I would like to recognize several groups that are each important contributors to today's celebration. We thank the George Stevens Academy, Tasty Bikes Jazz Combo, conducted by Phil and Gallagher for providing us with music. Thank you, George Stevens Academy. We have an outstanding faculty at Maine Maritime. These faculty have spent the last four years challenging these graduates, pushing them to new levels of understanding and appreciation, teaching them tangible skills, and celebrating their personal and academic achievements. They are justifiably proud of this graduating class. Please join me in thanking our faculty. Congratulations on this honor, and thank, and thank you for your prized experience and expertise. All of our staff here at Maine Maritime have also played an integral role in making this campus a great place to live and study. They have gotten to know these graduates and have helped invest in their futures. Please join me in thanking our staff. Like Paul and his wife Christy, who are both in the audience. Welcome, Welcome President Select and then Mrs. Paul. I also want, also want to recognize some of the people here on the stage with me who are important partners with the Academy. Joining us today is Dr. Sashi Kumar, a Deputy Associate Administrator for the Maritime Administration. This is a homecoming of sorts as Sasha was an MMA student and then, and then dean of our business school for several years. Also on the stage with me is Captain Amy Ferentino, commander, U.S. Coast Guard sector in Northern New England. Thank you for being here to administer the oath to our graduates. There's another individual here who I know many of you recognize, our commandant of the shipman, John Cashman. Uh, and there are others up here with me who will be introduced as our program assistants. Now, now to begin our official proceedings, I am pleased to introduce Earl Chinkett, class of 77, and the chair of the Maine Maritime Academy Board of Trustees. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Williamson, President Brennan, fellow members of the board, faculty, staff, families, and friends, and most, most importantly, graduates, graduates of the class of 2022. On behalf, On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I welcome you to the 79th commencement exercise of the Maine Maritime Academy. Thank, Thank you, you, Chairman Chad. I'm, I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Dr. Sashi Kumar, Deputy, Deputy Administration for Mara. Dr. Dr. Kumar was appointed the Mara Deputy Associate Administrator and National Coordinator of Maritime Education and Training in November 2015. Dr. Kumar brings together four decades of exceptional academic and maritime industry leadership experience. He is the founding dean of the Lowe Sullivan School of International Business here at, and Logistics here at Maine Maritime Academy, where he's an emeritus professor and the 12th Chief Academic Officer at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, where he also served three terms as superintendent. Uh, welcome, Dr. Kumar.
Thank, Thank you, you from Ross Williamson for that kind introduction. I'm, I'm truly delighted to rejoin the main maritime family today on this momentous occasion. President Bellin, trustees of the Academy, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, parents, friends, and family members, on behalf of the U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and Acting Maritime Administrator Lucinda Leslie, it's my honor to be here today to convey our sincere congratulations and best wishes to the main maritime class of 2022. Class of 2022, this day marks the culmination of four years of your hard work dedication, and commitment. In, in these four years, you have, have polished your academic skills, skills as well as your leadership and social skills. You have confronted, confronted challenges without fear and learned from those challenges. And I'm, and I'm sure, sure you celebrated many of those challenges and those victories as well. All of you have endured two long years of unprecedented challenges that could have left you feeling adrift. But rather, you and the class of 2022 rose to the occasion and maintained the proud traditions of this esteemed academy. Against all hosts, you adapted and you succeeded. And under the guidance of Dr. Brennan and your outstanding faculty and staff, you have stood the test of time, and now you are primed for the challenges of the real world. Your main maritime education has given each one of you a strong foundation to tackle those adversities. So now you have the tools, the know-how, the critical thinking skill to navigate safely around Whatever comes your way, whether it be stormy waters or tranquil seas. From the entire maritime administration, leadership and staff, congratulations on your achievement. Thank you for your commitment to serve the nation in peace and war. Go forth, Mariners Class of 2022. Keep us proud. Special announcement. The acting, acting this, this is from, from the Department, Department of Transportation, Maritime, Maritime Administration. The, the acting Maritime Administrator takes great pleasure in presenting the United States Virgin Marine Medal for Outstanding Achievement to Dr. William J. Brennan for services as set forth in the following citation. For, for professional achievement in the superior performance of his duties while serving as the 14th President of the Maine Maritime Academy, displaying superior initiative and leadership, Dr. Brennan identified the critical impact that the prolonged pandemic had on the ability of maritime academies, all six academies, to meet the required at sea training requirements for their cadets and worked convincingly with the U.S. Coast Guard and the Maritime Administration to develop alternative training programs that enable cadets to graduate year or schedule. Dr. Brennan's exceptional work ensured uninterrupted quality training and enabled cadets from every maritime academy who represented virtually every state in the nation to graduate, sail on their license, earn military commissions, and begin graduate level studies. Dr. Brennan's passion, subject matter expertise, political acumen, and hard work were also significant to gaining support for the development of the National Security Multinational Mission Vessel Project. He never wavered from his strong belief 
that these vessels would be both a wise and necessary investment which would pay dividends for the entire U.S. maritime industry. His efforts help ensure that America's future merchant marine officers will train on modern, purpose-built, state-of-the-art training vessels that will also provide the nation with five highly capable platforms ready to respond to state and national emergencies. The distinctive accomplishments of Dr. Brennan reflect great credit upon himself and the United, United States Virgin Marine, signed Lucinda Leslie, Acting Maritime Administrator. Sir, there is a citation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Uh, Chairman Chen Kaplan, now we'll introduce our commencement speaker. He is, he is a leading authority on environmental policy related to oceans, the atmosphere, and maritime issues. Dr. Brennan has served as head of the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, as Assistant U.S. Secretary of Commerce for Oceans and Atmosphere, and as Commissioner of the Main Department of Resources for the State of Maine. In addition to NOAA, his NOAA duties, Dr. Brennan serves as the Director of the United States Climate Change Science Program, integrating government-supported research on climate and global change. He also served for a time as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Commerce for International Affairs, managing the international activities for NOAA and its subsidiaries. Prior to joining the federal government, Dr. Brennan headed W.J. Brennan Associates, a policy and management consulting firm with private and public sector clients in natural resource, energy, and environmental areas. He also served as the Sawyer Professor of Ocean Studies in the Corning School of Ocean Studies at Maine Maritime Academy. Dr. Brennan began his professional career in 1977 with NOAA Fisheries at the Woods Hole Laboratory. His main roots remain strong, and following graduate studies in 1983, he served as senior staff in the U.S. House of Representatives Office for Congressman John McKernan. In 1987, he was appointed by Governor McKernan to serve in his cabinet as Commissioner of the Maine Department of Resources, a position he held for eight years. Dr. Brennan holds a B.S. degree in Marine Biology from the University of Maine, a master's degree in Marine Affairs from the University of Rhode Island, and he received his doctoral degree in Ecology and Environmental Sciences from the University of Maine. He's also the recipient of an honorary Doctor of Science degree from the University of Rhode Island for his distinguished career devoted to Marine Environment Policy. He and his wife, Heather, reside in Castine. They have two sons, Will and Tyler, and a daughter, Amy. So I'd like to take this opportunity to present our commencement speaker today, Dr. Brennan, um, a great friend of the Maritime Academy and a good friend of mine. Captain Florentino, Captain Jackson, 
This, this is, is such a proud moment for all of us gathering here today. First, because we are here in person, not, not celebrating via Zoom. And even more, more importantly, because you are all to be congratulated for surviving some of the most difficult years in the Academy's history. This has taken an enormous effort on the part of each and every member of the Supreme Court this occasion. It has been no small task after dealing with the testing, the social isolation, the changes to your courses, and all the elements that made the past two years so difficult. You've done exceedingly well, but then I would not have expected anything less. And your drive to succeed. These traits will serve you well in years to come. As, as you follow the example of those who have gone before you, I want to thank you, parents, family, and friends who have stood by you and have helped you and have given you the strength and determination to carry on. Thanks are also due to the Board of Trustees who have done their best to determine the right path to follow during these very trying times. And your professors, all of the staff here, as well as so many members of the casting community who have stood by you and me during our time here. They all deserve our gratitude. At MMA, we are one community, one family. We have helped each other overcome many obstacles in order to provide positive outcomes for our students. You are all deserving of my thanks and admiration. As has been told, I am retiring after 12 years as your president, president of your academy. I know it may not seem like it, but on this day and at this time, you graduates and I have a great deal in common. Like you, I am leaving the academy at the conclusion of this ceremony. When we arrived here, each of us came to our new roles with both trepidation and anticipation. Ready, ready to, to immerse, immerse ourselves in the unique community that is our academy. Like, like you, I wanted, I wanted to learn from the best in order to lead the best. I believe we all wanted to apply our experiences and potential to help make our academy, our small town, and our larger world better places. In doing so, we had to meet challenges, find ways to adapt, find our way through. Like you, I wanted to earn the trust and respect of my peers and feel the pride that comes with such gains. I too made mistakes and tried to learn from them. I learned at times that what I thought was right was wrong and what I thought was wrong was not. I learned that what sometimes seemed simple was really pretty complicated. And what seemed complicated was just, just about following basic principles. Like, like you, I too had to swallow undesirable choices and frustrating measures. I came to see in those challenges the opportunity to embrace the core value of good shipmates, to care for all others on our common ship of faith. Like you, I have now come to reflect on what I have accomplished here and what awaits me in my next chapter. Each of us has to say goodbye to trusted friends and worthy companions who have sailed the same course with us. Like you, I am now embarking on the next phase of my life, and that will require learning many new things. Each of us must remember that learning is a lifelong process. Learning is not what we do only in our years at school. It's what we do every day of our lives in order to seek new understandings 
and new appreciations. Every day, we must think critically and for ourselves. And we must especially do so in ways that learn from those who come from different backgrounds, backgrounds near and far, with different life experiences. It is shallow validation, not developmental learning, to seek and listen to only those who are already think like we do. True learning, the kind that makes you a more informed, analytically rich, rigorous, and accepting person, comes from the challenges of understanding and valuing the experiences of others. That is the lifelong process of personal and professional development. That is true learning. And so this commencement is a first for all of you and one like no other for me. Because while I am saying goodbye to each of you, I am leaving with you. We are heading off on our own course with promises and challenges awaiting each of us. We each leave with the same trepidation and anticipation that we started with, but eager to see what lies ahead. My sincere hope is that in addition to the academic qualifications needed to earn your degrees, we have also been able to instill many other values that we consider important. Things like altruism, compassion, friendship, tolerance, and importantly, civility, a basic decency in our conduct, in our classrooms, our personal communications, and in our collective discussions. The present climate in our country has deteriorated to the point that there appears to be less civility, less listening, less love for others, less of a sense of community, and less kindness toward our fellow man. It is up to you to do your part to change this. My charge to you is that you will always remember we are a decent society. The pandemic brought home to me the divide between those who considered the common good and those who thought of themselves. More recently, the people of Ukraine have demonstrated a different cultural approach to times of extreme stress. The whole nation has shown how pulling together and caring for each other has turned a devastating situation into the, an example for the rest of the world. Instead of trampling their neighbors in an effort to escape the conflict, they've provided each other with shelter, with food, with comfort, and with courage. It is humbling evidence of what people can do when they pull together. When you were freshmen, those of you in the regiment of midshipmen were taught that to lead, you must first learn to follow. And you did that by following the head in front of you. That lesson in humility serves us all well today. In your future lives, you are likely to be placed in a position of authority. You are the leaders of tomorrow. But getting that job is much easier than doing that job. You need the temperament and emotional intelligence to understand those who report to you. Be confident, but also be gracious and humble. In all your dealings, I urge you to speak and act thoughtfully and with civility. When you arrived here four years ago, I introduced during convocation the notion that you were all mariners, and as such, you will have an unwavering resolve to stay focused and do what needs to be done, no matter what the challenge. It makes no difference what your major or degree is. You are all very much a part of this institution and always will be. You've probably forged lifelong friendships here. Like you, I have too. And I owe all associated with this college a huge debt of gratitude for all the help and support you have given me and have given my students over the years. Well, I will no longer be the president. You can be sure that I will always be part of this institution, and I look forward to hearing news of your accomplishments. I consider myself truly fortunate to have been able to get to know so many wonderful people associated with this amazing little college. Because of our ability to change and adapt, I know that our reputation and our success 
will continue for many years ahead on a path forged by our alumni throughout the years. So, this is farewell but not goodbye.
Upon concluding, I'll ask that you respond with a hearty I do, which will reflect your fidelity to the oath, your accomplishment, and your class unity. Please raise your right hand. I do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully and honestly, according to the best of my skill and judgment, and without concealment or reservation, perform all duties required by the laws of the United States. I will faithfully and honestly carry out the lawful orders of my superior officers aboard a vessel. If you affirm, say I do. I do. Congratulations. To the Merchant Marine officers and graduates of the class of 22, best wishes for continued success. May you have fair winds and following seas. Congratulations. Thank you, Chairman Chuchet, and congratulations, Dr. Brennan. Will the candidates for the Master of Science degree please rise? President Brennan, in the presence of the faculty, I present to you the candidates for the Master of Science degree. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science with all the rights and privileges there to pertain. To those receiving the Master of Science degree, please come forward when your name is called. President Brennan, in the 
the presence of the faculty, I present to you the candidates for the Associate of Science degree. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Associate of Science with all the rights and privileges here to pertain.
the Medical Science degree, please come forward when your name is called.
M. Carter. Kevin Dokan Chapel Marshall.
Donovan, Donovan Michael, Michael Ferris. Ferris. Tyler J. Hall. Yeah! 
Paige Nicole LeClaire. Le 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 
Jacob Daniel Olson, Magna Cum Laude. Rebecca Lee Rankin, Magna Cum Laude. Adam Wesley Reed, Magna Cum Laude.
Owen M. Smith, the third. Patrick, Patrick. 
John Whittem. Hip, 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 hip,